Hello again, and thanks very much for joining us. And here are business stories making headlines at this hour. I'm Michael Nath. Nigeria may face fresh hurdles as the geopolitical tension in Europe yesterday escalated with moves to officially ban Russian crude oil. The European Commission proposed the full ban on Russian crude uh, following the continued attack on Ukraine. The proposed ban, which has sent oil prices rising by over 4% to about $108 per barrel, means higher cost petroleum products for Nigeria and ultimately an increase in subsidy spending. Leading buyers of Nigerian crude, especially India and China, may dump Nigeria crude for much discounted Russian oil, reports have said. As Europe is considering its ban, India, which is the world's third largest oil importer and Nigeria's largest crude buyer, is negotiating discounts for the Russian oil, asking for below $70 per barrel price to compensate for logistics, financing and sanction troubles. The United Nations has called for an additional $351 million as part of the overall $1.1 billion for the humanitarian response plan to aid Nigeria to deal with the insecurity situation in the Northwest. This was disclosed by Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, while addressing State House correspondents after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari on Wednesday. The UN chief who arrived in Nigeria on a two-day visit had earlier visited Maiduguri in Nigeria's northeast to address the humanitarian crisis there. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, uh, said the organization would be mobilizing an additional 321 million US dollars in support of Nigeria's efforts to combat terrorist activities in the northeast. Guterres thanked the federal government for its unwavering support for the multinational joint task force and the Lake Chad Basin Commission, adding that Nigeria is a pillar of a continental and global cooperation and a steadfast part of the United Nations. Nigeria's federal government incurred a sum of 4.22 trillion naira on debt servicing in 2021, increasing by 29.3% compared to 3.27 trillion naira spent in the previous year. On the other hand, revenue for the period only increased marginally by 9.3% to 4.39 trillion naira. This means that Nigeria spent about 96% of its revenue on servicing debt obligations of the year under review. Compared to the previous year, Nigeria's debt service to revenue ratio increased from 81.1% in 2020 to 96% in the year under review. This is according to analyst analysis of data released from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Nigeria's government revenue has been constrained in recent times by the underperformance of oil revenue due to the continuous decline in production capacity and volatility in the price of crude oil. Telecommunications under the Association of Licensed Telecom Operators of Nigeria have demanded upward reviews in force calls, short message services, SMS and data costs. Alton said thus in a letter addressed to the Nigerian Communications Commission, citing the rising cost of running business in the country. According to Alton, the proposed upward review of the price of course will increase from 6.4 naira to 8.95 naira, while the price cap of SMS will increase from 4 naira to 5.61 naira. The group said this had increased energy costs, increasing their operating expenses by 35%. And now to help understand the impact of this development on phone users, um, right now joined by renowned economist, Dr. Emeka Okingu. Hello, Emeka, good afternoon and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good afternoon and thanks for having me on your program. Beautiful. Now, we understand that the cost of running business in Nigeria is expensive as the days go by. But is the 40% increase in any way or manner justified? Well, I, I, calling it expensive will be understating it. I think it's, uh, the word should have been astronomical. Okay, uh, and uh, you're, you're, you're having this astronomical cost 
against products that are not even competitive. All right, and you're having this astronomical cost against no social service of any kind. So what it is you have uh, is a cacophony of uh, of, uh, of uh, problems or troubles or what what my friend prefers to call problems, troubles and problems mixed together. Uh, I think we are really in between that hard place, you know, and the rock. Uh, there's no way you can be increasing energy cost and then you are increasing the cost of uh, uh, telecommunications uh, services. It, it's just, it doesn't just sit. Okay. Uh, I don't see that the reason, I don't see the essence. Uh, it's not as if uh, that you have uh, better connectivity. It's not as if you have, you know, better network services. So what we're just seeing is that they're just transferring, you know, what is supposed to be government, you know, responsibility as it were, you know, to the citizens in Rida that are already capsing. So for me, the word is not expensive. The word is is astronomical and impossible, you know, challenges against running businesses in Nigeria. Well, everyone knows that going into business, the purpose for that is to make profits. A profit. These operators in question went into business in order to make profits. But if they continue losing instead of gaining, it is not wise either to continue just the same way. Things have changed and there is uh, no reasonable, there is no doubt at all that one would consider this step taken by these operators as a wise one. Okay, are you talking about the operators, the telecoms operators? Yes. Are you talking about the people that are giving services to? No, they, they, now that they are trying to increase the, the, the what is it now, the, uh, the uh, tariff, I think yes. yeah, one would think that it is very justifiable. Otherwise, they are doing no business. Let's, let's, let's even have a very simple, very simplistic you know, uh, 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 overview of it. Now, you're calling me from Ibadan, I'm in Abuja. Uh, if by the end of the day, this call will cost us about 20,000 or 10,000, who bears the cost? How many people are advertising in your in your radio television? What is the cost of you know having this program you know uh, on air? Are you looking at your your energy cost yourself? So by the end of the day, if you want to get your views across and a lot of what it is you're talking about now, I, I, I stand to be quoted uh, wrongly, uh, would be on a, a you know corporate social responsibility. You're giving services that is not even consumerate or commiserate with uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, advertising and uh, uh, you're getting in your stations. So if you're looking at them as, as being in business, why don't you look at you, you know, at the lower rank of this service uh, provision? How does that also affect you? If you needed to get 5,000 Naira uh, recharge card to, to talk to any of your guests at any point in time, and you needed to talk to 10 guests in a day, how much would that be taken out of your operating capital? Okay, so it's just not about them being in business. It's all about us understanding, you know, how this impacts and affects everybody. Okay? All right. Now, there is no doubt that uh, this uh, step is uh, the outcome of this uh, very action is going to uh, have a, a kind of ripple effect on other businesses. Uh, yes. uh, in what nature uh, do we expect this to happen? Well, it's because we don't have alternatives, you know, and, and this is where uh, somehow uh, we, we look at what, what you might call your social architecture. In what ways is, is government supporting you to be able to survive? Okay, and one of these, these uh, telecom communications is, is, very, is an essential and must be treated as an essential service. Okay, that is phone, telephone uh, and phone services are no longer luxuries. Okay, a lot, a lot of people, especially in this, in this uh, COVID context, a lot of people, you know, don't want to go to church. They want to join the service using their telephones. So how is that going to be impacting on them? A lot of people are working from home. How is it going to be impacting on them? So it's not about looking at you know, the man who is uh, building the infrastructure. What about the man who now needs, you know, this service uh, as he needs oxygen? He needs it to be able to do his everyday, you know, businesses. So I think it's a failure of of a, of, a, of a total understanding of what it needs. You know what what citizen when you are talking about you know protecting the lives and properties of citizens, people think it's about you know your breath. Okay, to to some people, to everybody, telephone has become life. 
people in Ibadan are listening to me right now, and I'm, I'm in Abuja, seated in my office because you know of this uh, of this equipment. So what happens when you are not able to get across to me? Are you going to be driving down or flying down or get me to fly down to Ibadan to come to your studio? What about those who need to, you know to to talk to their patients? What about those who need to reach out to their parents? So if you, when you're looking at this thing, you must be able to look at the social aspect, the social component of, you know, this 40% increase. And nobody's salary is increasing. I don't know if yours has increased. <laughs> okay, at least mine hasn't. Okay? So, you, I mean, the, the, the cost of uh, living is getting worse by the day. And then you are encouraging people, you know, to do things virtually, you know, more than they do it physically. How does this add up? Now, uh, uh, beyond the uh, GSM uh, operators, other businesses have also decided to leave uh, the country for neighboring countries where there is constant uh, uh, energy. Uh, would you think the government is doing anything at all to address this very issue of energy costs? I don't even think it's a, it's a government problem. I think, I think it's, it's all of our problems for us to be able to understand, you know, that what you need most. When we, when we talk about energy and power, uh, do we need to depend on hydro? Do we need to depend? I mean, there, there, there are new protocols all over all over the globe. Now, I'm not even talking about uh, the solars. I'm talking about the hydrogen fuel cells. And we have all these that we can be able to deploy. I'm talking about the CNGs, the compressed natural gas. So I think it's all about the failure of, you know, government, if you may, you know, depending on your classification of government, because somehow, somehow, all of us make up government. Okay, to be able to build a holistic development framework for our country. Okay, and then first and foremost, uh, uh, you know, apply what you call the minimums, the standards for what we we'll call you know, uh, our minimums for, for human habitation or human existence. Okay, the moment you make uh, energy a luxury, which is what it's become, I mean, we are, we are very happy to celebrate somebody buying a generator and then calling it past my neighbor. Okay, that psyche means that, oh, energy is something of some kind of privilege. Mm -hmm. Nobody has made it, you know, as elementary as, as we need to eat every day, we also need energy. All right, thank you very much. We, thank we, you so much, uh, uh, Mecca, for being part of our program, program today. Is. All right. Now, continuing with the rest of the news, the cost of powering telecommunication services uh, with diesel has jumped by at least 233.33% uh, in recent months to 30 billion naira monthly, according to analysis and computation of data from Nigerian telecoms operators. The development brings the annual cost of powering telecom services with diesel to 360 billion naira. The operators under the aegis of the Association of Licensed Telecoms Operators of Nigeria said so the cost of diesel, which is required to power network towers, base stations and offices, rose from 225 naira in January 2022 to over 750 naira in March 2022. I stated this in a letter written to the Nigerian Communications Commission. According to the industry data, uh, mobile telecommunication operators use an average of 40 million liters of diesel per month to power telecom sites. Going by the diesel consumption figure and the current price of diesel, the cost of powering telecom services will be about 30 billion naira monthly and 360 billion naira annually. Banks' demand deposits rose by 1.1 trillion naira in three months to 16.89 trillion naira as of the end of March. Figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria revealed on Wednesday. According to the CBN, the figure, which stood at 15.81 trillion naira as of the end of January, rose to 16.17 trillion naira as of the end of February. A demand deposit account offers access to depositors' money without requiring advance notice by allowing the depositor to withdraw money on demand and as needed. The CBN also disclosed that currency in circulation fell by 42.43 billion naira between not January and March. The CBN revealed in its data on the currency that the currencies, which stood at 3.29 trillion naira as of the end of January, fell to 3.25 trillion naira by the end of March. 
The Central Bank of Nigeria has warned Nigerian banks to be vigilant regarding transactions related to the Benin Republic due to intelligence that suggests the country is increasingly becoming a drug trafficking transit and consumption hub in West Africa. This was disclosed in a circular signed by Asuko Evelyn uh, E for the Director of Banking Supervision. The circular sent to Nigerian banks states the need to implement enhanced measures for customer on board and due diligence on existing accounts and transactions related to Benin Republic. The Apex Bank called for additional measures such as reclassifying of related customers and conducting enhanced due diligence. CBN also asked Nigerian banks to strengthen its Know Your Customer and Customer Due Diligence policies as mandated by regulation. The revenue to come to the federal government and Lagos state government from the Lake Deep Sea located at the Lagos Free Zone is about 201 billion naira, the Minister of Labor and Culture, Alai Mohammed, had said on Wednesday. In his speech after a tour of the facility located some 65 kilometers east of Lagos, the minister described the EC port, a build, own, operate and a transfer concern as a massive project, a game changer and a pace setter. According to him, quote, it is the deepest seaport in Nigeria and West Africa that it in itself is a unique advantage. It covers a land area of 90 hectares and it has a concession period of 45 years, end of quote. On the amount of investment in the seaport, Mohammed said $1.53 billion on fixed assets and $800 million on construction. But the aggregate impact has been put at $361 billion in 45 years, which will be over 200 times the costs of building it. Now, a few days after the federal government announced the reopening of four land borders, stakeholders, including clearing agents and car dealers, have predicted a 60% increase in the smuggling of vehicles into the country. The federal government had last weekend approved the reopening of Idiroko, uh, Jibia and uh, Kamba, and of course, Ecom land borders. A member of the National Association of Government approved freight uh, forwarders, Shegun Musa, predicted that with the reopening of the land borders, there were possibilities that the smuggling of vehicles might rise to about 60%. Musa, however, admitted that smuggling had been happening even when the borders were closed, noting that the reopening of the land borders would only give room for officers of the NCS to be compromised. The Lagos Chamber our chairman, a chairman of the Association of uh, Moto Dealers of Nigeria, Meche, Na Diweke uh, also predicted the issue of National Automotive Council will increase vehicle smuggling to say about 40%. Now, revenue from gas export and feedstock sales to the Nigeria liquefied natural gas limited hit $243.57 million in the first quarter of 2022. Uh, surpassing receipts from crude oil export by 259.4 percent. Latest data from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited showed that receipts from crude oil export stood at $93.89 million within the three-month period. The data showed that while $175.04 million was earned in March from gas, crude oil exports fetched 88 $0.93 million. Stakeholders in the crude oil palm oil uh, industry are warning of supply disruptions for cooking oil and imported crude palm oil on the Ghanaian market in the next two to three months. The ban on uh, palm oil export from Indonesia is not lifted soon. Indonesia, the world's biggest producer of crude palm oil, ordered a ban on the export of the commodities starting April 28 to address an ongoing shortage of cooking oil in the country. The Indonesian government acknowledged that the palm oil export ban will hurt international consumers, but deemed it necessary to lower the price of domestic branded cooking oil, which sold from 14,000 to 15,000 rupiah, that is uh, 0.96 US dollars. Now, per liter uh, to over 22,000 rupiahs, that is 1.52 US dollars. 
Now, President Joko Widodo said in a statement on April the 27th that the ban would be lifted once local demand was met and prices stabilized. The Auditor General has recommended the strengthening of controls of SAA in a bid to uh, ensure credible financial statements after flagging more than 22 billion rands in irregular ex expenditure for the financial year ended March 31, 2018. The office of the AG said yesterday that SAA's accounting authority and management should take note of the weaknesses highlighted in the 2017-2018 audit report, especially in dealing with instability, vacancies, compliance with procurement legislation and basic financial management disciplines. Uh, briefing the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, AG Deputy Business Executive uh, Fumulain uh, Rubana uh, said that the audit's account of SAA had remained stagnant with a qualified audit opinion with findings of predetermined objectives and compliance with legislation. He said the majority of the irregular spend SAA incurred to date was due to expire in contracts or no contracts in place as well as uh, procuring without complying with the supply chain management policy. The International Monetary Fund has stated that the adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender by the Central African Republic presents a number of challenges, ranking among the poorest nations in the world. The nation last week became the second to adopt a cryptocurrency after El Salvador. The Central African Republic is the first African nation to accept Bitcoin as legal tender. Opposition parties criticized the government's decision, which was made without consulting the regional central bank that manages the shared currency of six countries, including the Central African Republic. In response to concerns raised by the new law, IMF staff are assisting the Central African Republic's authorities. Now to foreign scene. Uh, Binance, one of the world's largest crypto exchanges, is participating in El Elon Musk's $44 billion acquisition Twitter, according to data filed with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Elon Musk filed an amended general statement of the acquisition, announcing that Twitter received an aggregate of about $7.2 billion in new financing commitments <laughs> in connection with the merger agreement subject to the conditions in co-investor equity commitment letters. According to the document, Benance is one of uh, 18 co-investors in the acquisition <laughs> to industry players like uh, Sequoia, Capital Fund and Fidelity Management and Research Company. The International Energy Agency and the United States are to release a total of 240 million barrels of crude oil from their strategic reserves to the global energy market in the next six months, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries has said. OPEC Secretary General Mohamed Senussi Bankido uh, made this known in his opening remarks the 62nd video conference meeting of the Joint Technical Committee. He said, and I quote, Here we also need to be cognizant that the uh, commitments for the emergence release of oil stocks from International Energy Agency members amount to 120 million barrels to be released over a six-month period. He said what recent efforts and their developments imply is that they can continue shifts among policymakers to be better understanding what is required in the energy transition. End of quote. Shell reported record profits on Thursday, boosted by soaring commodities prices, prompting calls for oil and gas companies to pay a windfall tax to help British households with spiraling energy bills. Shell earned $9.1 billion in adjusted earnings for the three months that ended March 31. In the same quarter a year earlier, revenues were $3.2 billion and in the fourth quarter of 2021, it was $6.4 billion. Definitive estimates that first quarter adjusted earnings will be $9.1 billion. In addition, the oil giant increased its dividend by about 4% to $0.25 per share for the first quarter. Shell CEO said the war in Ukraine has caused significant disruption to global energy markets, 
which has demonstrated the importance of secure, reliable, and affordable energy. Turkey's annual inflation jumped to 69.97% in April, above forecasts and at a two-decade high, according to data on Thursday, fueled by the Russia-Ukraine conflict and rising energy and commodity prices after a last year's uh, lira crash. The currency slide was triggered by a 500 basis point easing cycle which began last September under pressure from President Tayyip Erdogan, uh, tri triggering the sustained surge in consumer prices. Month on month, uh, consumer prices uh, rose 7.25 percent. The Turkish Statistical Institute has said, uh, compared to a Reuters poll forecast of 6 percent, Annually, consumer price inflation was forecast to be 68%. The surge in consumer prices was driven by a 105.9% leap in the transportation sector, which includes energy prices and a 89.1% jump in food and non-alcoholic drinks prices, and the data has shown. We'll now go on a commercial break. When we we'll return, Perpetua has more for you on the news. Stay with us. Thank <laughs> you.